Hey y'all, it's Stacy. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to make the best crock pot mac and cheese you've ever had. Now, if you love this video and love this recipe, we sure would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe so that you get notified every time we post new recipes here on YouTube. All right, there's no doubt that you've been to a family reunion, a gathering, a potluck, and somebody claims that they have the best crock pot mac and cheese, and you've gone over to scoop up a big helping, and you've seen a curled, greasy mess. Well, there's a couple things that happen with crock pot and slow cooker mac and cheese recipes. We're working hard to eliminate those things so that we ensure creamy, delicious mac and cheese every single time. Let's start by talking about our cheese. Here I've got a 16 ounce block of sharp cheddar cheese that I've shredded. Now you guys know that I am no stranger to using a pre-bagged shredded cheese in many cases, but not in this case. Those cheeses are coated sometimes with cornstarch and cellulose, and what happens is those things interact with the liquid in our mac and cheese and make the texture really off. Sometimes they end up being clumpy, and so we want to stay away from those. So take the extra few minutes to shred your own cheese. I promise it's worth the effort. The other cheese that we're going to use here is American cheese. This is going to give us that gooey, cheesy flavor and texture that we really want out of this mac and cheese. Now, I'll show you what I use here. This is a sliced American cheese. It's a little bit different than, say, the sliced American cheese where you have to pull the plastic wrapper off each individual slice. Those will work for sure, but I typically like to splurge a little and buy the nicer stuff here. It comes either in the orange or the white. Either one of these will work. Now, if you can find it in a block, obviously, you're just going to shred that too. If it's in the slices like this, what I did is I just took and sliced it up into tiny, thin little strips just so it'll melt into our mac and cheese a little bit faster. I've got a six-quart slow cooker here, and I'm going to start by spraying a little non-stick cooking spray in here just to make the cleanup process a little bit easier. Now, the other cool thing about this recipe is our pasta, our macaroni, is going to cook all together. It's going to cook all in this, so there's no having to cook this first. This is a one-pound package, 16 ounces, of uncooked macaroni that's going right into our slow cooker. Next, I've got one and a half cups of whole milk, and I've got two 12-ounce cans of evaporated milk. Now, this is evaporated milk, not sweetened condensed milk. People often get these confused, but they are certainly not the same thing. If you head over to the blog, you'll see one reader had an issue with their mac and cheese being a little too sweet, and I didn't catch on quickly, but other readers did and realized that she had actually used sweetened condensed milk rather than evaporated milk. Two 12-ounce cans. Next, I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of unsalted butter, and I've got about a quarter of a teaspoon of dry ground mustard. Next, our cheese. This is one 16-ounce block of sharp cheddar cheese that I shredded. Make sure all that gets in there. And I've got four ounces of American cheese that I sliced really thinly. Now we're just going to stir this together. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt and then just kind of make sure all of our pasta is down in that milk. We're going to cover and cook on low for one hour. At the end of one hour, we're going to give this a stir and then cook it for an additional hour. Now, before I talked about mac and cheese with a weird texture. There are two things at play here. A lot of mac and cheese recipes call for eggs. Eggs don't work well in slow cooker mac and cheese because often they curdle. The other thing that works against us when it comes to crock pot mac and cheese is heat. Oftentimes, the heat will be uneven or the mac and cheese will overcook and the milk and the cheese will curdle together. So we have to keep a really close eye on this because every slow cooker cooks a little differently and we might end up with hot spots. That's why at the end of an hour, we're going to come back, give this a stir, and then see about how much longer we're going to need to cook this to get it to the right temperature. This is not one of those set it and forget it eight hour recipes. This mac and cheese is only going to take about two hours total of cook time. All right, so this has been cooking for about an hour on low. We're going to give this a stir for a couple of reasons. Number one, we want to make sure that all of our ingredients are well combined. The cheese is starting to melt, the butter's totally melted, and so we want to make sure that we get everything stirred together. The other thing that's specific to slow cookers is oftentimes they'll have a hot spot. 
and stirring things up keeps things from burning in one particular spot in the slow cooker. So I'm just going to give this a stir, put the lid back on, and then we're going to cook it for about an additional hour. Now, that period of time is really going to depend on the particular pasta that you use, so you may just have to taste it. Keep in mind, too, that once you turn this off, you're going to want to move it to low and serve it pretty quickly. It does not hold well because what's going to happen is that cheese is eventually going to start to thicken and curdle. If that does happen, a little warm milk will help to thin it out. Just keep in mind that this is not a recipe that you want to start with and try it out on, at, at a big family function. You probably want to test this at home on your family first, just so that you can make sure that you get all the specifics down with your ingredients and your appliance. All right, so after about two hours, I think our mac and cheese is done. I'm gonna give this a taste to make sure that pasta is cooked through. Oftentimes I'll hear from readers that maybe the flavor falls a little flat on this recipe and it's really about the specific cheese that you choose. So give this a taste and add some salt and pepper if you'd like. Add some paprika, add some garlic, flavor it up however you like.